Hello everybody, this is Rick and we're down at the barn. Uh, if you saw my previous video, you saw where we seasoned up the uh, black stone griddle. Well now we're going to cook us up some bacon and eggs, some sausage, and throw in a little bit of hash brown. I mean, I can't think of a good country breakfast without some potatoes thrown in there. And what I've done here is I've mixed up, uh, I've diced me up a, a, a potato. I got some green pepper and a little bit of jalapeno in there. Dash of onion powder. Uh, I don't have fresh onions at the house here because uh, the wife's allergic to them. So, so I got to kind of keep them low key and uh, threw in a little bit of salt and pepper to taste. So we got the potatoes there just sitting in the bowl, kind of soaking up all them seasonings. I'm going to go on and throw my bacon on the griddle. Now I know it's going to fry up a lot faster than anything else. But it's also going to provide me some good grease to cook off of. And you've got to have some good old grease for your potatoes and eggs. I'll throw me about four slices on there. And then go on and throw me some sausage. Now you may have heard or you may not have seen the previous video, that's fine. But the one thing we talked about is hot spots on your griddle. you got to kind of know where they're at so you know where you put your food at. You know if you've got some food that likes to cook faster and hotter. And, um, you can have one setting on your griddle, but if you have different hot spots on it, you can move it around to where you need it. And, and obviously, I don't quite know where those hot spots are on this one yet. Uh, but we're going to learn. We're going to we're going to get it. The one thing I do know how to do, and that's that's cook bacon and eggs on the griddle. So we we're, we're going to get her done here. But it's going to be kind of a a learning lesson for both of us as we go. Now I got my sausage patties in here. Got them on there, and everything seems to be doing pretty good. I don't I don't want to I don't want to just burn it to a crisp. Get it going a little bit there. I'm going to throw my potatoes on here in the back corner. Yeah, we got them going in there. There you go. Got them looking nice on the grill. Set this off on the side. You know, I talked about my grandma's cooking and my mom's cooking. Somebody else that was a pretty good cook in the family that I remember as well was my grandpa. Um, that, it wasn't uncommon to find him in the kitchen there and cooking up a big old meal. Now, he'd cook sometimes. I mean, grandma didn't have a problem with it either, but um, he could make a mean possum. Now, a lot of people didn't like possum and all that, and I can't say as I'd eat one now. But uh, I remember him uh, boiling that thing down to get all the, well, trim all, as much fat as he could off of it, and then you just boil that possum down, separate the fat from the meat. Then once you kind of boil it till the meat fell off the bone, you'd go on and pull it out of the pot. And it'd separate the meat from the, the bone throw it back in there, and then uh, throw in a little bit of his homemade uh, barbecue sauce. Throw that thing on a sesame seed bun with a Vidalia onion and big old pickle on there, and i tell you what, us, us grandkids tore into that possum and we didn't know any different. I mean, that's, that's the way things were when I was growing up, and you know, I've done it with raccoon. I get a young raccoon, I got a high school buddy that I know that still does some uh, trapping and and uh, he'll he'll save me a, a young coon ever so often and 
would do the same thing, kind of a, a camp ritual when we go down to the deer camp is to cook us up a barbecued coon. And I tell you what, if you ate one, it, it, it don't get much better than that. So we got our bacon cooking here. We got our potatoes in there and sausage. Everything's looking good. Let me do a little flip on this bacon here. How do y'all like your bacon? I kind of like mine a little limp, but I want it done too. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want it burnt and crispy. Not when I'm eating my bacon and eggs. Now, if I'm having me a if I'm having me a BLT, then I want it to be able to, when I bite into that bacon and lettuce and tomato, I want the bacon to go with me. I don't I don't want to stay in the toast there because the, it was too limp or too soft and didn't want to bite and I'd have to tear it. Oh yeah. Potatoes are looking nice. them out to where they can get cooking. Once I throw the eggs in here, I'm gonna give y'all a I'll give you a little picture of what our griddle looks like with the food on here and kind of give you an idea of how much you can cook on this 17 inch. Now I you know I'm cooking for myself and I like to eat. But uh I think if I just throw a little bit more potatoes and uh maybe another slice of bacon on there I think this thing would handle the wife and I together. I'm gonna reach over here and pop a couple slices of bread in a toaster now. I don't have an oven down at the barn, but if I did, I'd have me a, I'd have me a pan of biscuits cooking right now because the one thing I'm gonna do with this toast, and I don't, I don't often do this, and I, I certainly don't tell people all the time, but I'm gonna put some blackberry jam on it. Now, to me, that's almost an insult when you put a, blackberry jam on a slice of bread or toast, it deserves a buttered, a hot buttered biscuit and uh, not the like of a piece of toast. But for the fact that I'm down here at the barn cooking and uh, I don't have an oven and I didn't cook some up at the house and run them down here, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna eat some blackberry jam on some toast. Okay, I got that going. I think my bacon is looking about right. My sausage is looking good. Potatoes are looking good. You know, I've talked about talked about the fact that my mom taught me how to cook. So when I was uh, when I joined the Army, I went to basic training there at Fort Knox, and this is back in 1973, so Vietnam War was just ending, and and uh, those were trying times for the country, for those that are old enough to remember, uh, but those, for those that ain't, this is a little bit of a lesson for you. Uh, the soldiers weren't very well received when they came back out of theater and uh, it, it was just some pretty rough times back then, but I think now is the country's done a great job of going back and thanking our vets for the service that they've done. But I'm, I'm a wandering a little bit here. What I want to really talk about is the fact that we was in basic training there one day, and they had us out there. We'd already done PT in the morning, physical training. We'd done our run up agony and down misery. Uh, for those that have been in Knox, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And uh, the old first sergeant got in front of the formation there, and shoot, we were lined up getting ready to go in the mess hall to eat us some chow, and uh, we didn't have a cook. The mess sergeant didn't show up that day. So he got out in front of the formation, the first sergeant did, and he just, he just flat outright asked everybody, he said, does anybody know how to cook? Well, shoot, I held my hand up and looked around, and that was it. It was just me. Out of the whole company, I was the only one that held my hand up. So he hollered, he said, Private, get on up here. 
So I ran up there to the first sergeant and he said, what do you know how to cook? And I said, well, I know how to cook French toast. He said, let's go. So he took me in that kitchen. He grabbed up a couple other privates. They were acting as my kitchen police. And I started busting eggs into a big old pan and mixing me up some eggs and some milk and threw a little bit of cinnamon in there I found in the cabinet cabinet and uh, had the griddles all fired up. They, they set them up for me and uh, I started cooking French toast. Fed about 110 people in that company and uh, to this day, thank goodness, I passed all my tank training and they didn't make me a cook for the army because man that, that was a lot of pressure and getting them folks fed and, and all that well thank thank goodness as well the mess sergeant showed up uh, he had had a pretty heavy night of drinking and he showed up to, by the time lunch was ready and I didn't have to do any more cooking after that but that was my one day of, one meal of cooking in the army and uh Although I love it to death, I just decided that wasn't quite right for me. Now, I sat here talking and stuff, and I told you I'd show you what everything looks on the grill here. I busted my egg. My bacon is getting crispier than I'd like. But you can see I still got some space on the griddle here. So I think everything here is about ready to plate up. I'm going to flip my eggs because I like them over easy, over medium right here. Sausage is good. Potatoes are good. So I'm about ready to plate that up. My toast is ready over here. My toast is ready. Let me grab me a plate. Got me a plate on a pan of bacon on it. Couple slices of sausage. Some hash browns here. And a couple of eggs. Now I tell you what. When you look at these, throw in my toast there. Let me show you this plate of food here, this country breakfast. How's that looking for you? Well, if I knew how to reverse my phone there would have this thing right so this is going to be a definitely a blooper but i'm going to post it just the same so uh i tell you what i'm not going to put you through the trouble of sitting here watching me eat this meal but if you like this video give me a thumbs up subscribe and hit the bell uh, y'all take care